G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. Five years ago, I made a video on this channel predicting the top 10 players in the AFL in 2024, which didn't turn out too bad. You can find that video by clicking the top right icon of this video. In today's version, I'm going to be taking a look at 2029, this time predicting the top 20 players in the competition. The top 20 players list is actually more exclusive than you'd think. There are a high number of high quality players that will be unlucky to miss out. By default, there will be a number of all Australian quality players that don't cram into the top 20, but we're going to have a crack nonetheless. So let's talk about my decision making process for this video first. First of all, we have to consider what a realistic age bracket is to make this list. Generally speaking, players in this list should be in their prime and therefore should be in the age bracket of being in their late 20s. If I'm not mistaken, the oldest players in my list today will be turning 31 in the season of 2029, while the youngest will be turning 25. Secondly, I'll put a disclaimer in and say that this list will somewhat be biased to the value of position. I've included 7 key position players, 5 of them genuine key forwards, 9 genuine midfielders, and then 4 players who are either dual position or utility types. So generally speaking, a good key position forward or a genuine midfielder will have a higher value than say a halfback flanker on average. So without further ado, let's get into this list. I'd like to start with my list of 7 key position players. Of this list, I've only selected one key position back. I reckon Sam Taylor is an absolute Monty to be a top line player even in 5 years from now. Taken with pick 28 in 2017, Taylor has emerged as one of the biggest surprise packets from this draft, winning all Australian honours in just his 5th season, which is great going for a big man. With his amazing blend of intercepting skills and his ability to change the momentum of games, Taylor is already the most influential key defender in the league, in my opinion. He'll be turning 30 in the season of 2029, which puts him at the back end of his prime. Jamara Yuval Hagen seems like an obvious nomination for this list too. When drafted at pick 1 in 2020, he was described as comparable to a young Buddy Franklin. Now there's no one quite like Buddy Franklin, but he may be the closest comparison we've seen for a while. Jamara has shown incremental improvement each year on an AFL list without blowing a season apart, but he's definitely blown individual games apart. I've seen it enough to believe that in 5 years time he could be one of the best in the game at what he does. I reckon the King Twins here are also worthy of nomination. Both have had their injury battles, but their rate of goals per game when they are fit is still impressive, considering their relatively young age. It's also quite remarkable how similar their records at AFL level are to each other, making it impossible to include one on this list without the other. Their athleticism, their contested marking and their ability to hit the scoreboard regularly make me feel confident both will threaten for common medals over the next 5 years. Let's talk about Luke Jackson. Jackson has up to this point been a hard player to assess the potential of, given it's unclear exactly what sort of player he is. But I've seen enough now to be convinced that, wherever he plays, he will be a top line footballer. If you put him in the ruck, he's capable of over 40 hitouts and damaging clearances. I don't expect him to ever be a common metal key forward, but if he can kick 30 odd goals as a ruck forward, considering his influence around the ground, that puts him in the elite category. I've seen enough to be confident he can do this in 5 years when he will actually be in his prime. Nick Larkey is the oldest player to make my list of top 20 players. I'm recording this off the back of an impressive All Australian season in 2023 where he kicked 71 goals in a side that lost 20 games in a row. At 31 he may be pushing the boundaries of his prime, but given key forwards tend to have a bit of a later prime, I erred on the side of leaving him in. As North improve over the next 5 years, he is another serious common medal contender. Oscar Allen is a year younger than Larky, and also qualifies for this list. Similar to Larky, it was impressive what Allen was able to do in 2023, kicking 53 goals in a side with a percentage of just over 50 and the lowest inside 50s in the league. Like Larky, you can only imagine what he is capable of in a more competitive side. It's the stuff that doesn't get recorded as stats that Allen brings as well that makes him so good, namely the heroic contested marks and the clutch moments that he delivers in. I'll give an honourable mention to the current day guns that I omitted from this key position list, namely guys like Mackay, Kerno, Moore, Wiedering, Andrews, Sicily, and probably some others. To different extents, I felt like these names will be too old in 2029. This video is brought to you proudly in a paid partnership with BetterHelp, which is a platform that matches you with a credentialed therapist who is trained to listen and give helpful, unbiased advice. Now, the idea of starting therapy may be a little bit daunting. There are some people who maybe are a little bit uncomfortable with the face-to-face -face interaction, and in some cases as well, you might not feel like you're gonna be matched with the right therapist for you because they might not live in your area. But that's the great thing about BetterHelp because you can set up your therapy sessions either through phone call, video chat, or if you prefer text messaging, whatever's 
is the most comfortable for you, it's super convenient. To get started in the process, all you have to do is click either the link in the description or you go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. It takes you to a questionnaire and you fill that out so that they can assess your specific needs. In most cases, they will then match you with a therapist within 48 hours. You can then book your therapy sessions at a time that is convenient for you. And if you find that you're matched with someone that isn't quite the right fit, you do have the ability to switch to a different one at no additional cost. So if you think BetterHelp might be the right fit for you, like I said, you go to the link in the description or you can go to betterhelp.com forward slash true footy. Now clicking that link does support the channel, but it also gets you 10% off your first month with BetterHelp so you can be matched with a therapist who can listen and help. Now let's talk about the midfielders, of which I have nine. This part of the list is interesting because there are so many young gun midfielders that are probably already in the top 20 of the competition. Let's start with some of the more obvious ones. The Port Adelaide boys in Zach Butters and Connor Rosie both come to mind. Both of these players are top liners already, with Butters winning the most recent MVP award. Given they will be turning 29 in 2029, I imagine both are still firmly within their prime and playing to a high standard. The next one is Errol Goulden, who has been a star from the get-go and finished surprisingly high in the 2023 Brownlow medal. He's a hard-running, goal-scoring, genuine outside mid and will really be in the midst of his prime in 2029, the year in which he turns 27. This feels like a safe bet. I also have very little doubt Sam Walsh will make this list. When he's not laboring through injuries, Walsh is a high volume, high impact midfielder that plays his guts out. He's got an impressive amount of leadership and toughness too. And if he can get his body fit for an entire season, I feel like it's only a matter of time before Sam Walsh wins a Brownlow medal. Caleb Sarong is a high level midfielder in 2024 that is young enough to still be in his prime in five years. Sarong is a tenacious and tough inside midfielder and looks good enough and is consistent enough to win a Brownlow sooner rather than later. He'll be 28 in season 2029, and if you compare him to someone like Lockie Neal, that will well and truly be in his prime. Tom Green should also make this list, as a big-bodied midfielder that wins possessions effortlessly, like he has done pretty much from his debut season. Like the others on this list, he's a tenacious type with toughness and leadership, and he's wonderfully consistent. It's hard to imagine him falling away by the age of 28 too. By comparison, Matthew Rowell is the least proven player that I've mentioned so far, but I've still got him in this list. He's an interesting one to assess, as his game is comparatively more one-dimensional than some of these other players, but what he does do well, he does extremely well. He's one of the best tacklers in the game, and his consistent ability to win clearances is unbelievable, evidenced by his game of 20 clearances in opening round of 2024. If he can add more strings to his bow in terms of hurting teams on the outside, I back him in to be as good as any of the others on this list. I've also reserved a spot for Hawthorne's Will Day here. You could make the argument he's also more of a dual position player than a true midfielder, but this is the way I expect he develops. Stats don't tell the full story with Day. He's very impactful with the possessions he gets, and reminds me of Bont and Pelly in the way he covers the ground and uses the footy. I don't expect him to be as good as the Bont, as he hasn't demonstrated the same ability inside the forward 50, but I expect him to have a long career as an elite player. And finally, I'm going to throw Bailey Smith back into the mix here. He's become a bit of a forgotten about gun due to firstly being pushed slightly out of his position at the Dogs before he did an ACL. But he has the game breaking ability of anyone else and his composure and ability to win big games off his own boot is something I haven't forgotten. I'll make two predictions here. Bailey Smith is one of the best in the game in 2029 and he will be doing it in Geelong colors. So let's talk about the four remaining players I've got and don't worry, I haven't forgotten about Nick Dacos. In my mind, Dacos' best position is primarily as a halfback distributor with stints on the ball. There is a chance he develops into a full-time mid, and he may become a very good one, but his ability to set up play from the back half is unrivaled in the game, and this is where I see his best position. He comfortably makes this list. I reckon it's hard for small forwards to make this list, but I've picked one anyway, and I think Isaac Rankin is too good to leave off it. Not only is he prodigious around goals, he's a genuine match winner and over time I expect him to become a pretty good impact midfielder too. He'll be 29 in 2029 and could have a decorated career by then. Now for the youngest player on this entire list, Harry Sheasel. I've been biased against picking players that are too young in a genuinely elite list and perhaps that's a mistake, but Harry Sheasel is already an outstanding player. The question for me is where is he going to be playing in 2029? I think his best footy is as a mercurial forward who can roll through the guts to make an impact, and this is where I expect him to be. I expect Sheasel to be close to the best medium forward slash midfielder in the game by the age of 25. And finally, I've also included Machido Owens in this list. Like a few others mentioned, Owens is a tough one to bet on confidently, and it has nothing to do with his talent level. 
I think he has game-breaking ability as well as the talent to do it in multiple roles, but I think his likelihood of cracking into this list rests on his ability to become a more permanent midfielder. But I'll back him in, I think he's too good to not be in the top 20. So there you go guys, that's my list of 20. I know there will be a stack of talented players that I didn't include, but that would be true of anyone's top 20. I'll preempt a few comments by clarifying there were players I strongly considered for this list, but I decided they were too young. Players like George Wardlaw, Will Ashcroft and Harley Reid will just be starting their primes by then in my opinion, and will be on the fringes of this list. But let me know what you think in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.